Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to show you how to connect your Java applications to autonomous transaction processing using WebLogic Server. My name is Nirmala Sundarappa. I am the Principal Product Manager for Oracle, JDBC and UCP. Let's begin with prerequisites. The first prerequisite is to create an ATP. If you have already created an ATP, then we are set. Otherwise, sign in with your cloud credentials at cloud.oracle.com and create ATP. The second prerequisite is to download the client credential zip file. ATP mandates a secure connection. So Java applications require either Oracle wallets or Java key store files to connect to ATP. The client credential zip file contains all the required files for the connection. Now let's see WebLogic Server setup. If you already have WebLogic Server, then we are good. Otherwise, download and install the WebLogic Server version 12.2.1.3. Also, make sure you point your WebLogic Server to the latest JDK. WebLogic Server version 12.2.1.3 comes with 12.2 JDBC driver, but we want you to use the latest 18.3 JDBC driver because it simplifies the connections to ATP. So replace the 12.2 JDBC driver with the 18.3 JDBC driver. In this video, we will see how to create a data source in WebLogic server. And this data source will be pointing to ATP. And we will also see how to create a servlet that uses the data source that we have created and we will run the servlet on WebLogic server. We have the sample that we have used in this video on GitHub. There are two ways to connect to ADP. One, using Java key stores, and the second, using Oracle wallets. We will see both these approaches in this video. Let's begin with creating a data source in WebLogic server. Before we do that, we have to start the WebLogic server. I have created a project test app in Eclipse and I've added WebLogic server as a server to this project. So let me start the server. You can see that the WebLogic server is started. Log into your WebLogic server console with the username and password that you have. Now, we are going to create a data source that connects to ATP. For this, you need to go to Services, click on Data Sources, and click on New and choose UCP Data Source. Let's call this data source as ATP Data Source. Let's give JNDI name as ORCL ATP underscore DS. We don't want XA. Let's choose thin connections. Copy the database URL. And here I'm using JDBC test underscore medium as the TNS alias. You can pass TNS admin as part of the database URL. Make sure you provide the location where you have unzipped the client credential zip file. This location is important because client credential zip file contains ojdbc.properties file. This file is used to specify connection properties required for either Oracle wallets or Java key stores. Enter the database username, password, Let's click on next and let's test the configuration. We are now successfully able to connect to ATP. Let's save this data source. Now we have ATP data source that we can use in our servlet. The next step is to use the data source that we have created in the servlet. For this, I have created a test app project that has UCP servlet. In this servlet, we will do a JNDI lookup to get the data source. And once we have the data source, we are going to get a connection. After we get the connection, we are going to create a table and insert few records, update a record, and clean up the table. 
So let's see how we are getting the data source. You can see that we are using ORCL ATP underscore DS for the GNDI lookup. Before we run this servlet, I want to show you how we are using Oracle wallets or JKS behind the scenes. For this, you will need to go to the location where you have placed the client credentials zip file. This is the location where I have placed the client credential zip file. One of the important files in this zip file is ojdbc.properties file. This properties file contains connection properties for both JKS and Oracle wallets. Make sure you uncomment the one that you want to use. For example, for Oracle wallets, you need to have the Oracle wallets related property. Running the UCP servlet, let's go to the test app project and click on run as run on server. We need to invoke UCP servlet. You can see that we successfully got a connection to ATP. For using JKS, open your ojdbc.properties file and make sure you comment the wallet related property and uncomment JKS related properties. This time we are using JKS to connect to ATP. Make sure you restart the WebLogic server before you run the servlet. We'll go to test app project and run on server and we'll invoke UCP servlet. You can see that we successfully connected to ATP using JKS. Thank you for watching the video.